She's just a little weird, this Madison Bell. She's got a very twisted reality, and you never quite know what she's doing or how she's going to react to something. Things do get a little crazy, a little possessive, some stuff that you don't want to have happen on a, you know, second date. <laughs> She's a, a very needy and selfish young woman. This girl is just psycho. You know, she's missing a few things up, up there. I've had some good feedback. I, I've scared some people. So take a look at this face and get ready to get scared. Charlie Ball and Philip Schneider, the original writers, um, created, I thought, a, a great idea in having, like, you know, the, the, the kind of obvious way of putting it is fatal attraction in a high school. That was kind of a good log line. A swim fan is a, a fatal attraction story, and it's just, it's just younger. It's for the next generation. So you want to just forget all about it, pretend like it never happened? And I learned a lot from Glenn Close's performance. She was great because she was so scary, and at the same time, she was so vulnerable. Did I do something wrong? Would you just talk to me? Madison, I have a lot going on right now, OK? When I first read Swim Fan, I was scared, actually. I was scared of, of the character that I was to play. <laughs> She's, you know, the, 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 the new kid in town, for sure, but also the stranger. And with her, she brings some mystery, she brings some allure, and she brings some trouble. She's really a very psychologically damaged, I mean, screwed up, obsessive woman. I hope that people don't walk away going, what a prick, you know? <laughs> I hope they don't walk away going, God, what a jerk for cheating on his girlfriend, you know? I hope that they go, oh, you know what? He was led yeah, astray by this crazy, crazy girl. Madison is very serious about her relationships, specifically with, with boys. Like, she needs the one to make her feel special. She needs the one that will be her everything. And Erica obviously could have spiraled off into some weird, you know, psychotic kind of teen performance that I think she managed um, to avoid. Getting into character for Madison um, was interesting. It was definitely a lot of fun because I like a challenge and we are very different people, <laughs> fortunately. <laughs> but the kind of anger that she experiences, I don't think I've ever experienced. And so I really just had to be creative and I had to act. Inevitably, to me, acting is, most of the time for me, it's kind of like focusing in on the aspects of yourself that you think you share with the character. Instead of bringing her closer to me, I distance herself from me because she is so outrageous that if I looked at her from an outside viewpoint, it went, you have to understand, Erica, this means a lot to Madison. This means a lot to her, OK? You have to go in there, you have to get this for her. Do you want to escape? Yeah, sometimes. But not right now. Right now, I like where I am. Madison is very manipulative. And you often wonder if things happen to just occur or if she has arranged for them to occur. Excuse me. I can't get this stupid thing open, and I'm late for English. Do you think you could? Yeah, I can. Take a look, yeah. The first time Madison sees Ben, she has this spark for him. She thinks he can replace this void in her life that she has from losing her last boyfriend. And you know that the audience is, well, I mean, hopefully on my side. Hopefully. <laughs> uh, but they at least get it that she's coming on too strong. Of course, I already know all about him. Amy just can't stop talking about her perfect boyfriend, even when I beg her to stop. Amy <laughs> is really safe for Ben. He knows he loves her. Uh, he knows that she loves him and worships him. She's safe. She's there. She's home. Madison is completely different. Madison is new. She's different. I mean, that's one of the reasons that we cast Erica, because she was not your sort of typical femme fatale. She was a far more interesting, dynamic, sophisticated, mysterious woman, and that's what attracts Ben to her. Careful. I can't swim. Really? Yeah. Show me how. We talked about that scene so much because we really wanted to make sure that 
it was enough of a seduction that you kind of almost forgive Ben. You, you see that I was making it really difficult for him to turn me down. But she comes into the pool in this little red bra and panties and is very persuasive. I mean, I can understand why it happens. It's OK, I want you to. I just saw the sex scene between me and Erica. That was my first sex scene in a movie. I've had like kissing scenes and I mean, alluded to sex scenes, but never where it was like, here's the sex right on screen, you know? This is not technically my first on film love scene, but it is certainly the most intense or the most passionate. And so we just had to you. take it light. We had to make jokes all day and we had to compliment each other on how bad we looked and we had to just get through it. When I described it to my, my, my girlfriend, my real life girlfriend, I used the word intense and that made her really angry. <laughs> uh, and I don't blame her. Do you have my panties? Excuse me? My panties. I think I may have left them in your car. It's just from the very first rehearsals where we kind of read through the script, the, the evil in her um, was coming out rather quickly. And I actually had to kind of suppress that through the first parts of the story until I could really let it come out. I think that the impact of having sex and being denied from that sort of drives Madison crazy. And she reacts in really crazy, silly sort of ways. Madison's evil, manipulative way is to, to weave herself into his life as, as solidly as she possibly can. And that means making friends with his girlfriend. That means dating his best friend. That means finding out where he works and finding out, you know, his past and meeting his mother and just making herself this undeniable presence. And at the same time, doing the work of, of extrapolating as much information about him as she can to use against him when it comes to the point that she has to use it against him because he's just not behaving. Surprise! Yeah. The first time we get an inkling into Madison's uh, obsessive nature and her very manipulative nature is when we she arrives unexpectedly and uninvited at uh, Ben's house. It's so great to finally meet your mother. What do you mean, finally? You mean... You just met me. Doesn't feel that way. Who invited her? Does she know the mom? She doesn't even know where Ben lives. How did she show up there? Uh, I think it was fun to see the transition as Ben starts to realize something is awry. And Madison starts to demonstrate her, the, her true colors. I find that very creepy. I think it's well written. I think it, it, it does a good job of walking the fine line between someone who's not technically doing anything wrong and yet everything they're doing is very invasive and very weird. But you can't say to them, you're doing this wrong because they're actually not doing anything wrong. They're just being nice to your mum. Gotcha. Hey. 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 <laughs> uh, and he feels like the world's coming down and everybody so? knows and somebody says something that makes him go, Whoa. oh, okay, they don't know. Oh, okay, I'm just imagining things, you know. So he, he becomes this kind of paranoid guy. But at the same time, his paranoia is somewhat justified because Ultimately, Madison is out to get him. There are two sort of snaps that Madison has. The first snap is when she decides Ben is the one. And then she thinks she succeeded in getting Ben. And the second snap is when she finally gets it through her head that he will not have her. And that is the snap where all hell breaks loose and she decides you know, if I can't have you, no one can. And then she tries to take Amy out of the picture a couple of times. <laughs> and Ben has to save her, which is wonderful. We need a damsel in distress. Amy realizes that Madison's a total nut when she runs her off the road and puts her in the hospital and then steals her from her boyfriend's house and then handcuffs her to a chair and then kicks her nine feet underwater. I believe that's when she's sort of getting it. I think the audience is going to have a lot of fun with this film. And I really hope they don't end up hating me. 
<laughs> because I'm an actor and even I have done that, where I just, an actor does a great job as the villain and I end up despising him and I have to remind myself he's just a talented actor. But I'm gonna try to counteract that with roles in the future. <laughs>